and welcome. It's been a little while since we did a video and posted anything. Um, and I do apologize for that, but uh, we've been working on another project, part of what will be the solar system for the garage. And the last couple of months have been uh, building battery packs out of headway cells for that project, but that'll be in another video. Uh, but this will be part of the, um, I don't want to call it a modification series, but um, uh, part of the garage series in reference to the, if you remember the last video, we showed this wildfire lift here after we got it assembled. And you, could do, you can see that we do have a vehicle on the lift at this point. But the purpose of this video is to replicate a modification that Musty One did to his lift. And you can see here what's coming out of the side tray is a string of LED lights. And there is enough room in that center tray where tool trays and or and you can also see it way down there at the beginning of the lift as the hydraulic jack that uh, I found that you can just like Musty One did you can fit a strip of these flexible LED strips and it doesn't interfere with uh, getting the jack or using these little uh, center channels as you can see here. So we've got our first strip in place. I've marked it where we can cut it and you can see this is the type of strip where every time you see a set of those copper pads on this particular strip it is a section where the strip can be cut to length. So we're going to cut the strip for this side and then cut the strip for the other side there and then they electrically just join them back together and then finally hook up a power supply. And uh, it, it won't be the equivalent of trying to eliminate the need of using a shop light to help see underneath the vehicle, uh, but it will uh, at least give you, you know, a little bit of light to aid into using like a handheld uh, uh, adjustable LED light or some type of a shop light underneath the vehicle. But uh, we're going to work on this a little bit and uh, uh, we'll bring you back in a bit. Talk to you later. Hey and welcome back to uh, uh, what is in a sense basically part two. Uh, as we talked about earlier, we had our strip measured for our first side and we cut it. And uh, this strip, when it was ordered, is was long enough to just do both sides. So we went ahead and uh, cut back the, um, uh, the plastic insulation here and just soldered on a couple pairs of leads and sealed it up with just a little bit of low temperature hot glue doesn't need to be a super seal because of where it's going to be sitting it's not necessarily going to be exposed to a, a wet or or damp environment even though it may be on a lift it'll be have a vehicle underneath of it but uh, the likelihood of fluid going in going into the tray this will be sitting in although the potentials there uh, that seal will be good enough to kind of hold everything in place and again and we just kind of, as you can see, just kind of messily, just kind of glopped it on to uh, this end just to also help give the wiring some uh, rigidity where it was uh, reattached to the strip when we cut it. Uh, again, this particular strip, and this is what you have to be mindful of because not all LED strips will let you do this, but in this particular case, on this strip, every time you see one of those copper partition pads with a line going through it, this one, you might not be able to see it but you kind of see a line with an x in the center that lets you know that's where it can be cut and um, since we knew we were going to be using the entire length of this uh, set we made our first one as we said earlier we cut it and we just joined it back together with some wiring as, again as you can kind of see here uh, now this is a low voltage dc set this is 24 volts dc and the power supply that we're using is just a standard 24 volt uh, 100 watt power supply it's a bit overkill as far as the size as far as the power requirements needed for this string uh, but it did match the manufacturer's 
uh, it ex actually exceeds uh, the manufacturer's specifications uh, for the power draw for this entire set. Uh, these, this particular reel is 6,500K, is either 6,000 or 6,500K. I'll put a link to the, where I got this particular reel, which was Amazon. I'll put a link to the actual item in the description, as well as the, again, the power supply being used. And these are, I want to say it said it was uh, about 1,200 or 1,300 LEDs total in this strip. Now the camera is probably going to wash out when I do this, but just to show this to you. And as you can see, we've got all of our LED lights prior to the cut and then after the cut. And... The way the camera sees it, I'm sure this will turn out the same in the video. This probably just looks like a solid uh, uh, lit tube, and I can assure you these are all individual LEDs. Uh, they're bright enough that you don't want to stare at them directly uh, for too lengthy of a period because it will leave spots in your vision. But now that we've got it cut and electrically joined back together, uh, we'll get it mounted into the trays on the lift, and then we'll come back. And just to show you the progress we've made, you can see that uh, down the strip, you can see the strip of LEDs and down on this channel, the strip as well. And that's going to wash out the camera pretty good because, uh, you know, as stated earlier, these are uh, 6,000, I think they're 6,000 or 6,500K in the range. Uh, they are fairly bright, uh, but as you'll see, it, it does a good job of getting you some additional lighting up underneath the vehicle that you're working with. Now, is it going to eliminate your need to have a shop light or another source of light uh, to be more focused on what you're working on? No, uh, but it will provide some assistance. Uh, and what we are using to secure the light strips to the bottom of the channel is just one on the beginning of the channel, one at the end and one at the middle are these little self-adhesive uh, cable tie-downs. And like I said, it's just three of them. Uh, you don't have to get too overboard because this strip does a pretty good job of just laying in the channel. Uh, and that those three tie-downs are just kind of keep it in place and keep it from shifting forward or back. And along the front here, we had some excess strip. This strip was probably about two foot longer than needed. So rather than cut it, and they have to seal the end. And as you can see across the front of the lift here, we just took the excess and uh, ran it along this side. And you can see it does a pretty good job of helping to kind of illuminate the, the front area here. And as far as the power supply, this was the connector that came on the strip. It was a female end. And what we have here is a uh, male end that we just added to what came on the power supply. The power supply itself kind of came with a pigtail that ended here and we just soldered this connector to it. And we're just going to tuck that behind this little uh, brace piece here. Now um, we did a we made sure that we kind of kept all of our wiring away from any of the existing linkages uh, we will get a cable hold down piece and try to kind of put that power supply cable there to hold it in place. And we'll also make up a proper length of cord uh, that will be there and just kind of laying in slack. So that way when you raise the lift, it can pull from it and then just kind of drop down and accumulate here. But for now, it's just an extension cord on it, just as a, um, a temporary measure. Now, one thing I did notice, and like I said, this connector came on this light strip, and this connector is getting fairly well warm, a little bit, a little bit warmer than I would like. Uh, now, I had just to show you here. That's kind of a loose fit, which I, I don't necessarily like. Now, this end came on this strip. Uh, what I'm going to do is I will cut this 
and the bag that I bought these in came also with the female ends of this cable. So I'm actually going to remove uh, this piece that came with their strip and replace it with my own. Uh, I won't cover that here, but I'll bring it back to you once we've got that done and we'll recheck the temperature on this connector and make sure that's a little bit more because the wire itself is fine. It's just the connector. Uh, and you can tell when you go to plug this in, this is fairly loose fit. And that's why it's generating a, a lot of heat. But what I'll do next is I'll get the camera on a tripod and kind of show you before and after under the vehicle. And you'll kind of get an idea of what the light output is uh, using this particular strip. Now, you've got plenty of room in this channel, so you could go with, you know, two rows of stripping here or slightly bigger LEDs, but um, I think that'll be enough at least for this initial use. But I'll get you set up on a tripod, get you into the vehicle, and bring you back. So just a little bit of an undershot of the car, um, and you can see kind of how those light strips are illuminating uh, certain sections a little bit better than if you had uh, no light at all. But uh, I'm going to go turn the light strips both uh, off and then back on, and uh, hopefully you get a little better view. You'll have to apologize for the camera angle. I don't have a short enough tripod to get up underneath. Uh, without raising the car up quite a bit and if I were to do that then the lights that are in the garage which are also quite bright would kind of start to swamp in underneath but one moment All right, so again, just to kind of give, hopefully give you a little bit of ideal of what it looks like without and with, and then also with the lights in the garage itself out. And some of you may have noticed by the placement of certain items underneath this vehicle, what type of vehicle this is. And if you guessed uh, Hellcat, you'd be correct. This is the 2019 Hellcat. And we're gonna have a series of videos coming out on this vehicle. Uh, to start with a bunch of billet technologies uh, upgrades slash uh, engine dress up items uh, the billet technologies items were ordered the when the car was ordered back in 2019 and I've had them in a box uh, for about a year at this point and just now kind of getting to the point now that the garage is built and the lift is in we can start getting out here and making some videos and showing things like oil catch can installs. Now there are several other videos that already show the oil catch can installs uh, to include billet technology site itself, but uh, we'll be bringing those to you anyway. Uh, maybe give you a little bit different perspective on it and also kind of show you, um, uh, you know, uh, what the 2019 uh, layout would look like as far as the engine and such which uh, isn't too terribly different from uh, the actual uh, layout used with the exception of a couple of upgrades that you'll see and some items that are in the engine compartment that are in the 2019 version that aren't in the previous versions of this uh, particular vehicle. Uh, this is a six-speed manual. Uh, this is not automatic. It was ordered as manual uh, preference. Uh, now don't get me wrong, if you wish to get the automatic version, uh, more power to you. They are an excellent machine, either way. Uh, it was just my preference that if I'm going to get a sports car, uh, then I want to drive it uh, like it's a sports car, meaning I wanted the 
full experience of having a manual transmission. But again, that is just uh, my preference. Uh, but just to kind of show you, this is actually ended up being a little bit longer video than than needed or than what was originally intended. But just to let you know that uh, just doing a small upgrade to the lift here and that we will have more content uh, coming in the start of 2021. Again, we will start with this Hellcat uh, and then we will also bring in a Ram 2500 that has had a Pro Charger installed on it roughly three years ago that we will be looking to do additional performance items on it, such as um, cam, uh, Hellcat lifters, Hellcat springs, and uh, squeeze out a little bit more performance on it. Yes, it is a 2500, but just because it's a big, heavy, uh, heavy-duty ready truck, it uh, doesn't mean you can't get it to scoot down the road just a little bit quicker. Uh, but that's all we have for this video, and uh, we'll chat with you later. Bye.